Peter Dickinson reporting there. Now, for more analysis, let's go to Sergei Yelkelchik. He's the Professor of Slavic Studies and History at the University of Victoria in Canada. Sergei, thank you very much for your time. Could you start by telling us a little bit about the history that connects and divides Ukraine and Russia that set the stage for the conflict that we're seeing right now? Thank you, Sally, for having me. Uh, Ukraine and Russia do share quite a lot of history, but it is seen very differently on the Ukrainian and Russian side of the border. On the Ukrainian side, it is seen as imperial past when Ukraine was colonized by the Russian Empire and the Ukrainian language was banned. On the Russian side, uh, the Russian government keeps insisting that Ukrainians are brothers and sisters, and of course Mr. Putin famously or perhaps infamously claimed that the Ukrainian nation is not a nation at all but part of the Russian people. So, this is a radical contradiction which cannot be solved by historians because it can be solved by democracy and by people expressing their opinion. And of course, uh, supporting the imperial point of view also means not giving the voice to the people. So would you say that Putin is trying to rewrite history here by invading Ukraine? Yes, he is also playing to his domestic audience. Because his ratings were down, the Russian economy was not performing very well, and he thought, perhaps, that a successful little war would do a miracle for his regime. But that has not happened. Now, it is your sense that within Russia, even among people who may not like Putin, is there an aggressive patriotism when it comes to Ukraine? I mean, do you sense that there, there might even be a division about this in Russia itself? There is definitely is a division and there is a significant part of the Russian society that does not want to deal with Mr. Putin's aggressive wars, which would make Russia a pariah on the international scene. But of course, um, Mr. Putin's attack on Ukraine is also an attack on democratic society. One reason why he wanted to attack Ukraine is that he had faced in 2011 and 2012 massive demonstrations of protest in Moscow and St. Petersburg of his own people protesting against his um, rule, which seems to now last for life. Um, and he thought that if Ukraine is successful, if Ukraine is democratic and prosperous, it will become an example to the Russian society. He doesn't want Ukraine to be successful and prosperous precisely because of that. How would you describe the U.S. involvement? Do you think that the U.S. has played a part in escalating the tensions between Russia and Ukraine? That is actually the version uh, propagandized by the Russian official channels. But the problem is, the Russian channels also claimed that there would be no resistance, that the Ukrainian people would meet Mr. Putin's army with flowers. This is what you could read in Russian newspapers only a week ago. The entire strategy was basically calculated on the assumption that paratroopers would be able to easily eliminate the Ukrainian leadership and capture all the cities. But then the Ukrainian people fought back, and it turned into a very difficult situation for Mr. Putin's regime. It exposed his lies to the entire world. Now, watching this conflict unravel in the last few days, it's as if the identity of Ukraine has emerged stronger than ever. Is this a product of living a life of resisting Russia? How do you reflect on your own countrymen as this crisis unfolds? It is a product of two recent popular revolutions in Ukraine, which built an enormous level of support in society and, and the involvement of ordinary people into supporting the country they wanted, they won in the revolution. I don't think Mr. Putin um, is able to estimate what it is like when your society is fully mobilized and underwent two revolutions and the war, of course, Russian-initiated war, has been going on for eight years which generated an enormous amount of displacement, suffering, casualties. All right, Sergei, we'll leave it there for the time being. Sergei Yelchachek, thank you very much for your time from the University of Victoria, Canada.